So the first one, it deals with natural science. It's true that it's not like the easiest subject to take this axis into account. So the activity I'm going to present has to do with the block two, human beings and health, okay? This activity aims to raise students' awareness regarding gender equality, as I've said before. And we're going to use group work. We just need the textbook, okay, so the natural science textbook, and ICT. In these kind of activities, they are going to do a little bit of research, so they need access to internet. If you cannot do it in the classroom, this, phase, this step of the activity can be done at home. So, it's for year, so year six students. So first of all, you as teacher should um, make your student active and be ready to participate in activity. So how can you do it? By asking some questions that they have to reflect on them individually at first. So you can ask, can you have a look at your textbook and see how many women can you see in them? For example, so they are going to start having a look to their textbook and see, well, I can find one, two, three, four, uh, whatever. Do you think are there more women or men? So by introducing these two questions, the students are going to become more engaged in the activity. Sorry. So then the outline is as follows. Children are going to be divided in small groups, okay? They have already had a look at their books, and then they are going to put in common and share some ideas. They are asked to guess whether in, in groups they have to think, what do you think? Have you had a look to your textbook? Do you think are there more women or men? So they start their discussion. Then they have to describe which kind of activities these women are, these and these men are carrying out. So while they are doing these activities in their groups, the teacher should awaken their interest by asking questions like, can you find an inventor? Can you find a foreign people? Is she, is she a woman or man or so on? Then, once they have already done this previous task, we are going to carry out a brainstorming, okay? So let's see what have you found. I found a, a famous um, poet or so whatever. So we are going to brainstorm and talk to them and open this kind of debate. Then, in their groups, using the internet, each group has to find at least five women from different countries, if possible from different continents, who have been relevant for whatever reason. Sometimes if we are doing this activity in natural science, so you can look for inventors or you can look for this kind of people who have been doing some activities in relation with natural science. Um, and then they have to create a lab book. I'm going to show you some pictures later made by a student. Then they have to present it to the classroom, and then the teacher organizes a debate to reflect on how these women's uh, cultural background can influence in their activities. So. Here you can see it was done in Spanish, but you can do it in higher level using CLIL. So they are going to first have a look to which women have been relevant through the story in different continents. Because sometimes if you don't introduce this rule, please take into account to consider where these women are from. Then the majority of them may be uh, sensitive and, and, def and defenseless. These pe some people can feel some time. And again, it's going to be group work, and we only need, so you as teachers, you only need to prepare, and you can think about another list of human rights. And again, for year six students, okay? The three that they think there are the more important ones for them. Once they have this idea in mind, you also can ask them, do you think you have all this right? And what about a small boy who lives in Africa? What do you think about them? Do you think they have the same conditions that you have? So it's the things like children should be constantly thinking and, and if possible, critically thinking about what we are doing in the classroom. Once they have 
reflect on this topic individually, then we're going to gather the enemy in small groups again. So each group has to name, they have to name their group and also to find who's going to be the representative uh, of their group. What else? We're going to make a list with at least five, ten um, human rights according to their viewpoints. So if they think the most important one, human rights was, whatever, this one, you're going to make up the list following their uh, opinions. So the teacher is going to be the one who is going to carry out the auction. You also have to prepare some false notes or the monopoly ones or whatever that you can play with them. So you're going to be like, you're going to give each group like 2,000 euros and each human right costs 120 euros, for example, okay? So then you start to negotiate with them according to the importance they give to each of the human rights. If they decide, their group decide, okay, I bid for this one, I bid for this one, it's really important, I want to take with my group this right, they have to pay for it, and also they have to prepare at least one sentence saying, um, this is really important because something. So then the teacher is going to say, who deserves to win this human, this human rights. So at the end, the groups with more human rights is the winner, okay? So then it's, I've just summed up it a bit. What about arts and craft? I bring you another idea. This activity can be done by year one, year two, okay? So the first course of primary education or the second one. So this activity, and in this activity, children are going to be introduced to Aboriginal art. And in, the way, uh, and in this way, learn about this culture, okay? They are then en enabled to create them their own, to create their own uh, designs. You will see later some pictures as well. So it's included within the block two of artistic expression. And the objective is to learn about a minority culture in an English-speaking country. As you can see here, not only we are promoting interculture when we are talking about the cultures of speaking English countries or about St. Patrick and these kind of activities, but also when we are talking about other continents' culture. But in this case, I brought this one. And also it promotes inclusions as this activity is suitable for all the abilities. I could give students just a little bit information about its history, how it's made, and how it's used to represent troubles, okay? After that, just a brief introduction, okay? After that, you can introduce the students using, using these kind of questions. What do you think these symbols represent? Of course, you don't have to give them the answers, but this is PDF version, and that's why it doesn't have this defect. So you have to make them think about what do you think these symbols represent. And then, can you see any of these symbols from the previous slide? What are the other things can you see? And you will see how their imagination goes and goes and flows and they can see many, many things different from you. So you can give them some examples like this or this one or this one as well. And then it's their time to work, okay? What do they have to do? When we introduce this kind of art to students, they will see, according to the symbols, that they represent, for example, footprints of different animals who, are used, who usually live in Australia, in this case, or they are representing different monuments or specific objects. So in this sense, what the students have to do is Having learned about the symbols and the history of this art, students are provided with paint and markers, okay? Their task is to create an image inspired by Aboriginal art, which represents a journey they frequently make. For example, you can ask them, try to draw using these symbols your way from home to school or any way they are really used to make, or they can also decide, they are gonna ask you, can I draw, I don't know, uh, the way I move from my, yes. Whichever path they used to do, like every day they can use to 
to, re to put into practice this uh, art, this kind of art.